where was the debate about whether or not borders or a test and trace system or other practical form of NPI could prevent the spread of the virus if it came to the United Kingdom? Um, well, I think, um, and this is from memory, if we look at the slides uh, mentioned in paragraph 9, um, that is the report of the planning that is being done for the reasonable worst-case scenario. The planning priorities there referred to were drawn, were they not, from the 2011 pandemic flu strategy document, which, as we've discussed, talked in terms of washing hands talked in terms of the possibility of closing schools, talked in terms of how to manage large numbers of dead people and communications. Uh, our, our scientific and clinical advice at the time, and certainly the WHO, uh, WHO's advice, uh, was that uh, closing borders uh, would have not more than a marginal timing uh, effect. So I'm not surprised. We've that, read that. Uh, yeah, that bit out. Yes. Uh, so I'm not surprised that was uh, uh, not uh, uh, discussed. And at this point, um, I don't think anyone in the UK uh, was talking about an extensive test and trace uh, system as being a possibility. Well, other I, than the first few hundred index cases, there was no real test trace system, was there? No. And that was because under the 2011 Pan Flu strategy. It was understood you don't need and you don't have to have a test trace system for dealing with flu, correct? Um, uh, well, ba ba basically, basically, yes. Right. Um, as I say, the, at, at that point, there's no testing infrastructure at all. So, yes. The, yeah. Doctrinally, because of the latent period, the incubation period, the characteristics of flu, there's no point having a test trace system. For this virus, which you knew was not a flu virus, where was the understanding that you did need a test, a massively scaled up test trace system, if there was to be any practical means of preventing the virus from reaching the United Kingdom and spreading? Um, that came much later. Why didn't it come then? Um, well, of course, at this point, um, I'll say I can't quite remember uh, the timeline of the actual creation of um, uh, uh, creation of tests. If you yeah. forgive me, now, the United Kingdom on the yeah. same day as South Korea invented a diagnostic test for coronavirus. Yeah. It was in, in fact, the middle of January, but there was no scaling up of the test and scale the test and trace system beyond the first few hundred index cases until well after. Yes, no, that's, that, um, that, 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 that's correct. And at this point, um, the, um, uh, the scientific advice we were uh, receiving um, was, I'm not quite sure what the right words are, not, 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 not definitive about how good even the tests were at this point. Do you accept that other countries turned it very much into a practical proposition? Oh well, and um, and I've said uh, uh, I've said before that uh, um, uh, some countries in um, uh, uh, Southeast Asia clearly did very very well. Yes. Uh, to, now the only thing I'd add on this: even the countries in Europe, um, which had a much bigger uh, testing uh, capacity, particularly Germany, which had a very extensive diagnostics uh, industry, uh, they didn't succeed in using testing to stop. Uh, the uh, virus uh, getting in uh, either. Regardless of Germany, with which we're not overly concerned in this inquiry, regardless of whether it was a silver bullet, there was no practical or policy consideration given at all until very much later to the practical proposition of a test and trace system to prevent the spread of the virus. No, and the advice we were uh, receiving uh, from our clinicians and scientists didn't include uh, that uh, measure, that is true.